Hi everyone, Elysia here. I have been getting a lot of responses and requests from a lot of people since my second to last uh, video that I posted of Kyoko asking how I've gotten my quails so docile and so tame. And I've been wanting to make some videos about, you know, going into detail as to how I was able to do that. So today is video number one of probably a two, maybe three part series on going into some detail as to how I've been able to really work on bringing out Kyoko's personality and building that bond with her and my other quails. Um, she is without a doubt the sweetest and the most calm I've had, um, but I have had others that were really friendly and I wanted to share with you guys uh, how I went about and how I approached um, building that bond and helping to build that relationship between myself and my quails. So step number one begins when the eggs are still in the incubator. I know it sounds crazy, but from my experience, babies can hear you. Babies learn your voice early on. Now I usually candle, I'm an over candler, I admit, but I like to candle on day three and day five, especially day five. That's the most important because on day five, you'll be able to see not just the heart beating, but you'll be able to see baby has formed its actual little body and it's doing jumps and swimming around and everything and it's reacting. So that's when I start to actually talk to baby. I introduce myself. I tell baby I love it and that it's safe and I say who I am and everything and then I quickly put it back in the incubator. Now from day seven especially, you want to start talking to them from the outside of the incubator. You can candle at day seven. I have not been very good at, you know, refraining from candling on day seven, but you can see a lot of movement and a lot of uh, the baby, how the baby reacts when you, when you speak to it. Because by that time, baby starts to get to know your voice and starts to get to know you. It recognizes you. Now, I don't know exactly what date babies start doing this, but I do know at some point within that first week of incubation, babies start to, they, they create a vibrating, um, a vibration in their bodies. And that's how they speak to their other hatchmates. So babies are talking to each other via these vibrations that their bodies make. So they can warn each other if one hears a sound that scares them or if they're worried about danger, they hear it and they can make sure that they hold still, they don't wiggle their egg, they don't move around, or they can signal them to relax and, you know, just move around. So once they get to know your voice, especially on day seven, you'll start to see them reacting and they'll actually begin to react to, to your voice, especially. They may react to each other in there when you're not talking. So if you see movement around like, usually around day 10, between 10 and 12 is when you'll first start to see the first external movement. And if you're not talking and you see that movement, they're talking to each other. That's usually what that means. Sometimes that, you know, the repositioning, but there's a good chance they're talking to each other. So little cool bit of tid, little tidbit of information that I've learned, but the more you talk to them, the better. They'll get to know your voice and they'll become comfortable with you. 
I personally, because I've always hatched a small batches at a time, I've named mine, usually on lockdown day, on day 14, I name them, and I candle them before, you know, as I'm taking the tray out, I candle each one of them, and I give them their name, I tap on their shell, and I say their name, and I say mommy loves you, and I do it that way, and I do it a couple of times. Uh, while I'm holding them. I don't take them out of the incubator a couple times that day. Just the one time, but I just, I tap real gently and I talk to them and I say their name, your name is, say for instance, Kyoko. Hi baby, your name's Kyoko, I love you, and that's how I do it. So when they hatch, they know their names. Kyoko came out knowing her name. Most of my quails came out knowing their names. They reacted when Ever, I called their names. They would wiggle their egg in the incubator. It was the cutest thing. It was the sweetest thing. Um, on hatch day, if you can be there when they're hatching, awesome. Usually, like with everything else in life, life, everything happens at night. We get sick at night. We get injured at night. Babies hatch at night when we're asleep and we miss it. Or if you're like me, you're half asleep because I don't want to go to sleep and I want to see it. So I have had some sleepless nights where I've fallen asleep sitting at the table watching them hatch and I just, I couldn't, I couldn't wait any longer. I had to go to bed. But as long as they're the first face that you see, they're going to imprint. They're going to see you once they hear your voice and they put, they, they match your voice to your face. They know who you are. They know. They are smarter than most people give them credit for. And I know this all too well. They are smart. And they are funny. And they have big personalities. And as their Quillian parents, we have the joy of doing everything we can to bring out that absolutely wonderful, smart, spunky personalities in them out. And they all have their own personalities, just like us humans, which makes it even more fun because you don't know what you're going to get. You know, color, we never know what we're going to get. We may think we know what we're going we're gonna to get, but a lot of the times we don't. Same when it comes to personality. Now, the first week after they hatch, I do like to keep them in the brooder as much as possible. However, like with Kyoko, I did, her and her hatchmates, I did let them out to run around the room, supervised, of course, and explore for however long they wanted, but I made sure I kept the room nice and warm. But if you give them the opportunity to kind of explore and then on their own, they tend to open up a little better. Whenever they feel like they're trapped and they feel like they have to be in such a small space all the time, they tend to be a little more fearful. So the more room and the more mental stimuli you can introduce them to, the better. They see colors. They hear sounds. Um, Kyoko, in particular, loves the color green. Green and pink. She loves the color green. I've had some where they didn't like the color green or they didn't like pink and they went specifically for the red or the yellow. And I gave them a lot of toys, especially cat toys, because those are, they're always really good in size and they're safe for them to play with. They're safe for quails to play with. But, you know. Kyoko's right here. Yeah, me. Want to say hi? Okay, you gotta make your cute little cameo. In every one of these videos, mommy makes. Yeah, I'm gonna talk about you. You're beautiful. And the more you can hold them as babies, the better. Do hold them as close to the ground as possible. Don't pick them up off the floor and above the brooder 
or when transferring them from incubator to brooder, try to get them down as close to the floor as you possibly can because they are jumpy and flighty, even as babies. And I've heard too many stories of babies falling, but yeah, little things, little things like that. Just keep them down to the close to the floor as possible and they're falling asleep. But this is what you're working towards. So today was just about mainly incubation period in the first, first week-ish of their life. Um, next video, I will go into more detail. I'm at the 10 minute mark. <laughs> but I talked about everything that I wanted to. Um, if you guys have any other questions for the incubation period, let me know and I can answer them in the comments. Or if you want to message me, that works too. Um, but next video, I'm going to talk about the physical hands-on approach after they hatch. So I'll see you guys next video. Mm. Say hi. Pretty girl. Pretty, pretty girl.